And today, I'm not going to talk with you in pure or understandable English, because I can't. <laughs> and also, I'm not sure I could speak Chinese to all of you, because I don't think many of you can understand either. So I'm going to talk to you in my Chinglish. <laughs> New language is an English sentence uh, with my Chinese accents. Uh, as you know, I've been published, uh, I published uh, about six books, over 30 languages. So this is why I had a chance to work around the world. Uh, I had a very confidence, I believe, it doesn't matter which language you speak, if people understand you from a very simple words, that is the, how do you say, what we are doing, called the globalization. So I was very, very confident until um, in the April of this year, 2013. I visited a family who had a child from China, uh, who adopted the children from China, two daughters. The youngest one um, only is three years old. When I walk into the house, just before 10 minutes, this little girl asked me questions, say, Xinran, can you speak English? I was really shocked. Because I've been traveling around the world, everybody said, oh, your English is amazing. And this little girl is the youngest one, and also very honest. So this is why I said to myself, okay, this is my homework. I'm Chinese. Since I was born, you know, Chinese culture told me, Chinese person always is a student. You have to learn until you die. So this will be my homework for my life, to study, to learn, improve my English. When I made the decision, I emailed to my friends. Then she sent a book to me, say, oh, you are very brave, because I read the book, English is rooted by 600 languages. So obviously, I have no chance to go on this. Then later on, I told her, I said, uh, actually, I have my homework uh, for myself, for my mother, and uh, for my Chinese children. That is the charity um, I'm start. It's from uh, 2004. Why? Why I start this charity? Because during my book tour around the world, I was really shocked by what I saw from the people in the street. Over 27 countries, Western family adopted Chinese children, mainly girls. I didn't know this before. Because you know, in China, no one talked about this. And not in the classroom, not media, and not family. It's a big secret. But everywhere you go, and you met those girls, and they speak all the different language, and with all kind Western parents. But they come to me, if they had a chance, always ask the same question. Why my Chinese mom didn't want to me? And also during my lectures in the many university, when I ask a student, say, please tell me, and what do you think about the Chinese culture? I was, you know, I'm Chinese. I believe the world knows China. So when the result come to me, I was really shocked. Chinese takeaway is number one. With 5,000 years of civilization, beautiful art, if you go to London from tomorrow, there's the largest Chinese painting exhibition at V&A. It's from 700 AD all the way to 1900. You will see how beautiful they are. But no one knew, or no one knew before. And also when I ask people what China is, and I, then I was told by one America student that she said, you know, my mom told me, and the China wasn't on the map, and the America teaching map before 1950s. I said, no. I can't believe that we are such a big country. Then she said, yes. So I taught her mom, and her mom said, yes, that time we have no idea about China. So all this kind of information gave me this kind of feeling. I want to set up this charity. 
So we did. So this girl was the first child come to our charity from China. Because our mission is to help adoptive family and to help their children to understand what's the culture difference. And also to help Chinese orphans because <coughs> most children adopted is healthy and disabled children have been left. In China, if you read from a website, you will see over 600,000 Chinese orphans in nowhere in China. This is the first time this year in March, Chinese government announced. Before it was a secret, hidden, don't know, black message. Then another mission for us is to help overseas Chinese, no matter who you are, or you grew up or was born here to understand your roots, or you can go back to see something. So when we try to help orphanages or particularly disabled children, now one volunteer sent to us say, you must help Hong Yan. This girl is Hong Yan. Hong Yan's both leg was cut off by the police car in southwest China, Yunnan, when she was only three years old. When we knew this news, when we started helping her, it was very easy for us to get support from whole China, give her metal legs, and every three years you have to uh, change because her body changed. Then Hong Yan became a pen friend of many countries, and she had a very good family in UK, in Somerset as well. But something happened that we didn't know. When Hong Yan reached the teenager, she sent a question to us, say, why life is so unfair to me? We had a workshop together, and with all the volunteers in London, and with China as well, say, how to answer the question? Because we have learned the history, we have learned from other people's uh, stories. Many people have asked the same question. Why life so unfair to me? I remember in that book, uh, workshop, I told them the one story I learned from a Tibetan family. If you read my second book called Sky Burial, and uh, you will see I did a lot of research on, on Tibetan's history with the Chinese part from uh, all the way to 500 AD. I one story I really changed my mind or changed my life. As I follow this family who are living the seasons on the horseback, so they move all the time. So one day, the little boy in the family and the fall over by the big stone, then he was bleeding. We're all very shocked, say, how to help him? Then the mother of the boy didn't care about the boy, went to the stone, touched the stone, say, Thank you for choosing my boy to be your friend. Then the boy stopped crying, then went to the stone. Mom said, come on, make your friend. And meet your friend, thanks him. This stone chose you. You know, we are a big group together, travel around this huge land, but he only chose you. So next year, in the future, you will know you have good friends from stone. So that story made me thought quite a lot. How this culture, people, turn this kind of negative or suffering or something into such a kind of you know, beautiful way to understand the life. So I told my uh, volunteer about this story. Now one of the Western uh, from America uh, volunteer uh, who was studying um, science in Cambridge, then he said, oh, no, 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 that's impossible. Because a human's life is a suffer all the way. When you are born, you're crying. 99% of people crying when you're born. So that is the way you can't, you know, even the education that make you thinking. The more you educated, the more you suffered. Yeah? So then we try how to make those children feel they are special, even they think life is unfair for them. Then we set up a special three schools for them. Then we set up 14 libraries, picture libraries from 
all of the world the picture books because they couldn't read and then they can't write. Then we we found all these kind of project really helped the children, made them so happy. Then we realized that education, like Sam just mentioned, not just in the classroom, not just in the sentence, in the books. Very important. Education is a blue sky. Everybody can share this blue sky. We should allow the children, allow the life. Had a storm, had a rain, had a snow, had anything gray, black, or dark. Then everybody can share the blue sky afterwards. You know, you have this space, you have a star, you have a sun and a beautiful moonlight as well. So this is why we are doing. Now our team working on three questions. The first question, why sexual selection is the longest war in the human history? Why still fighting that after 4,000 years of human record history? If you see China as a government announced this year, by 2020, and uh, about uh, 3 million men, 30 million men, sorry, more than women. So everybody worried how those men to find wives. But uh, my question is, according to the nature, where those 30 million women, where they are? What's happened to them? Should we give them a voice? or answer to this question. Then again, by the end of 2010, 150,000 Chinese girls have been adopted by 27 countries. Is sometimes we can go back to help them to find their mothers? They grew up in a very different culture, but China in this side, we never talk about this issue. We ask people about how much money you own. Yeah, how much your house is worth. But we never talk about families. So the how much we can help them. So we are working on these three questions because we want to give the voice to those of silence. We want to help them to forgive if the life unfair to them. And also we want to them know there is a blue sky which is full of the love for their future as well. So my third homework today, particularly today, is to show you our Chinese culture and also I love to you to share with me. Because China is a 1.3 billion population, we have 56 group of different people. How we communicate? We have a long, long history about Silk Road. We didn't speak or we still don't speak the same language. We count by hands, okay? In the West, if you say six, seven, eight, nine, you have to use two hands. Chinese is just one, okay? So you can see, if you like, you follow me. This is one, two, three. Not three days, okay? This is all different meaning. This is three. Four, five, six. Please, come on. I know, when you learn this, go to Chinese restaurant, show them. This is a very powerful knowledge. I can make a deal and a business with you, okay? This is a six. You see, it's very easy to remember like animal food. Seven, like chicken. Eight, like a gun. Nine, like a hook, okay? 10, we have a two in China. No sounds like this, 10, good luck or north like this, okay, very strong. So we can try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, yeah, it's like a little chicken, yeah. <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, or easy way, just ten, or you like a good luck. So now I will tell you and in Chinese, you know my hands, you know what's the number, okay? 
If you can speak Chinese, let's be together. We are in the globalization. Yeah. <laughs> okay. E, e R, R, R San, San, San Si Wu Liu Chi Ba Jiu Shi Xie Xie